Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the Professional Prospector, and today I'm going to share with you a rich gold find that a friend of mine made. Uh, he's been out here working a little vein. He actually found it just by going through and, and doing soil sampling and, and panning out the results. We'll talk about that more. Now, I'm inside my car. You might, why are you inside your car, Chris? Well, I'm inside my car because it's kind of windy today, and I... I I'm, I'm, I'm going to apologize, but there's going to be some wind noise on this video. And I just thought I'd start out with something where there isn't a lot of wind. And I can talk to you just straightforward. So, anyway, he, I actually did a video not long after he made this discovery. It's been a while. But uh, I will uh, put a link to that video on the initial discovery. Uh, I'll put uh, it in the description below and then also a link to it up above here. And that way you can take a look at that if you want to kind of catch up and look at some of the background of this. But uh, he staked some claims out here and I'm in northern Nevada. This is not California. Uh, and, and even here in northern Nevada, I'm kind of toward the end of the season, at least for dry washing and stuff. Um, I'm going to do some dry washing later today. But uh, it came up here and he staked some claims. This is in a historic gold district. And he just started sampling the claims by literally digging small holes. He brought up water with him in the back of his pickup. He dug some holes and kind of in a line. And he traced where the gold was better in his pan all the way up to a certain area. On his claim and he started digging into the soil and sure enough there was a vein and he's been getting really good gold from this I'll show you a picture of some of the gold that he's getting so here's a pan of material after he's crushed it and processed it. he used a uh, he uses a crushing system small scale crusher and then uh, a gold cube that he uses to process the ore and this is after panning through his concentrates and getting all the excess stuff out of it, you can see he's got a nice thing of gold. And this is uh, like 17 grams, he told me. It was a little over half an ounce. And that, that gold in that pan was, uh, it's, it's a little over a half an ounce of gold. And he got that from about 100 pounds of rock. If you figure it out, uh, half an ounce for 100 pounds, well, there's a 20... There's 2,000, or 20 hundred or 2,000 pounds in a ton, and uh, 20 times, you know, ballpark of a half ounce per ton, or half ounce per 100 pounds, um, that gives you about 10 ounces per ton, which is really rich rock. And, and it, if you're a small miner and you uh, are looking to do some sort of small hard rock work, hey, 10 ounce a ton rock is great stuff to work with. So we're going to take a look at it. Um, I'm actually going to go kind of underground in his little working and we'll take some pictures and I'll talk about it and we'll talk about the, the crushing and the extracting of the gold from the rock and we'll get all caught up and uh, really take a look at what my friend here has been doing and I think you'll see it's pretty impressive. Hey, I know I just told you that I was going to shoot video. And I did shoot a little bit, but up there on the hill, man, that's what I shot inside the truck, was it was blowing like 30 miles an hour. And I've shot video in conditions like that before, and all you hear is just the whoosh of the wind noise. It's hard to even hear what people are saying. I'm not kidding. There were times when I was standing up on that hill and I had to like catch myself because I'd get a wind gust through. And it's like if you didn't rebalance and, you know, spread your feet apart to hold yourself, the wind did knock you over. That's how strong the gusts were. So I'm gonna have to convert this video to a kind of a slideshow with some talking from me at the, the bulletin board or at the whiteboard. And so the, I hope you enjoy it, but uh, I think it's really cool to look at working a, a, a rich hard rock gold pocket. And my friend uh, has really gotten into a nice pocket of gold. We're gonna explore that with him and take a look at what that's really like. So this is from my first video on this that I did with Alex. And you can see that just the little trench that's between us, it's maybe a little over a foot deep and maybe 
eight or ten feet long. It goes a little past where Alex is, is sitting. And that's what it was when we filmed the video. And in this video uh, that I did, it's really more about how to find this type of deposit. And if you're interested in finding these deposits after looking about at this video where we're going to talk about how to work it, if you're looking to find something like this on maybe a claim that you have or maybe do this kind of exploration and prospecting, well, take a look at the video. I'm going to put a, a link to it right here up above, and then I'll put a link to it also in the description. But keep in mind, this is where we were a couple years ago. Here's Alex standing a couple weeks ago at the same place where he and I were sitting in the first photograph. Now you can see there's a hole underneath him that goes down into the ground. And what was a little trench that was maybe, you know, 18 inches deep is now a hole that goes down maybe 12 feet. And he's taken an awful lot of nice gold out of that working in the couple of years since then. And, you know, in the first video, I talked about how to find deposits like this. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how to work something like this. And he's been working it with the various types of equipment. He's used, uh, uh, you know, initially just pick and pry bar. And, and then later, he got a little hammer drill that he uses up there. And then, you know, to work the, the wall rock around the little vein, it's uh, it's pretty hard, and so he's been using the uh, the expandable grout, and we're going to take a closer look at expandable grout and how small miners can use that to open up workings and get to gold ore like Alex is doing. Here's another view from another direction, and you can see pretty well the little yellow rope on there. This is basically just a little hand-operated windlass um, it uh, is a heavy yellow rope, uh, plastic uh, vinyl rope, and then uh, goes down to the bottom of the workings and you can haul it up uh, that way. It's a lot easier than trying to hand buckets of rock up a ladder or something like that. Once you get down you know, 12 feet like this thing is, it's uh, a lot easier to use some sort of a windlass to pull the bucket, the bucket up. But uh, he's down there quite a ways and expanding. He invited me to go into the mine, so let's take a look at that. Here's a look at Alex's high-grade vein in the wall of his working underground. And you can see it's just the little thing that pinches and swells. Uh, you know, it uh, maybe at the widest it's four inches and it narrows down to an inch. And, you know, it just doesn't look like much, but hey, it's high grade and you don't have to crush and extract all the other rock around it. And it's kind of broken up. It's it's fractured badly enough that, like I say, Alex was able to use a, uh, a hammer, a uh, hammer uh, drill type thing to extract the rock out of there. It didn't require blasting. But the wall rock on the side, yeah, that's, that's a lot harder and does require some work. Let's take a close-up look at the vein. Here's a close-up of that vein structure. You can see that there really isn't a lot of quartz there. The two lines basically at the bottom of this photograph are two little tiny quartz veinlets within the fracture zone. And, and really this is just a, a little fault zone, just a little shear zone that's been, uh, after it was formed, it was mineralized with gold-bearing solution and some quartz, but it's mostly clay, and the clay has uh, occurred because of the, uh, al the alteration of the uh, nearby rock, and the iron oxides have been introduced and probably were originally pyrite or some other iron sulfide, and then uh, the quartz also was introduced and, of course, the gold. It's very fractured because it was a fault zone, and that's why it's uh, easy to get the vein material out. But then the wall rock, of course, is much harder. There is a little bit of mineralization in the hanging wall part of the wall rock, which is in this photograph to the right. Here's a close-up of the ore that Alex removed from the mine. And you can see it's just, a, just some material sitting in the bottom of a bucket, which is why it looks a little weird, but it's 
pretty fine sized like I say it breaks up easily it's very sheared and broken so it's not hard to remove and it's not red with iron oxides but instead more golden yellow with iron oxides there's little bits of quartz in here and other rock but a lot of the fine stuff is clay and Alex told me that uh, you know if you try and process this stuff just by screening the fines don't give a very large portion of the gold you actually have to crush the material down to where it's all down to a, a fine powder kind of size before the gold will be really be released by the rocks now I mentioned as broken up as Alex's vein is the wall rock is really hard and takes a lot of work you can only you know poke back there far so far with uh, your spade part of, of your electric hammer and after that you have to break the wall rock to get access traditionally miners have used explosives like dynamite but there are a lot of regulations nowadays and a lot of requirements for safety and of course uh, explosives are dangerous so the small-scale miner needs another option and luckily there are some let's take a look at the one Alex uses this is Dexpan it's basically an expanding type of concrete so when it sets up as it finally cures it actually grows a little bit in size and that's enough to break rock or concrete it's used a lot in demolitions if they have to break a rock and you're in a, a neighborhood like a boulder falls down in the middle of a neighborhood off a hill or if you have to break up some uh, concrete foundations and you're in a neighborhood where you can't be setting off explosives uh, this is the answer it's because it can't explode it's available from places like Amazon or Home Depot it, it's basically a specialized concrete and it can't explode any more than regular concrete can explode so it's safe and it doesn't have the special safety requirements and licensing and everything else that goes along with high explosives here's an example where they used it to break up a concrete slab you can see they drilled a number of holes and then they put the grout in there and it expanded and it cracked everything and instead of having a giant slab of concrete that weighs a couple of tons now you have smaller pieces of concrete that you can either break with a sledge or otherwise pick up and toss away in, in a, a disposal dumpster. Let's take a look at how Alex uses it in his little prospect. Here's a shot from inside Alex's mine where he's drilled a number of holes and then put in the dex pan and then it's just a matter of waiting for the stuff to set up overnight. You can see that he's kind of drilled the holes there to take advantage of the working space and the, the cracks in the rock so that it will break the best way and here the dex pan has done its job it's made a big wide crack and, and of course Alex can get in there with a pry bar and pry that down and break that up because that slab it's a pretty heavy slab but you can see where he's been mining in there in behind the slab uh, not the crack where it broke but uh, to the left where he's been mining out his little vein and actually that opens up a space and then when he gets in there with his dex pan and breaks the rock it gives him a space for the rock to break to because that's one of the keys about using explosives or dex pan is that you have when you have that expansion it has to open up to some place and here's the rock finally after Alex has pried it down uh, some of the smaller pieces are ready to go up in a bucket the bigger pieces will take a few more whacks with a sledgehammer before they can go get hauled up in the bucket but you can see he's opened up a lot more space he may need to do a little bit more drilling and expanding to open up space for him to work but you can see he's made a lot of progress here with this and the system he's using is working well now when you're out there in an area where you've got little high-grade veins like that you know when the vein weathers uh, especially like I say it's uh, soft and easily broken as it weathers and the material moves down slope uh, there's gonna be some placers created and uh, Alex let me uh, dry wash some of the ground around there and clear off some of the area for him for future work 
and so I, I dry wash this area and you can see the the area that I worked and uh, ran this all through my dry washer and did pretty good and here's the gold I got from dry washing it weighs in at right about a gram and you know for a, a quick few hours of dry washing this was a pretty good deal and one of the things that I want to remind you guys is that where there are rich pockets like this there are going to be areas of gold bearing gravel down below the outcrop of the rich whatever it is be it a quartz vein or a little shear zone like Alex has here there's gonna be gold that erodes out and goes downhill so these are gonna be good places for you to dry wash or if the gold is coarse enough metal detect or to uh, you know if there's a stream nearby you can bucket it up and take it to a stream and run it through a sluice box either way this is a, a you know a sign that obviously there's some gold bearing material here so you can see Alex has made a lot of progress in the last couple of years and he's gotten some real nice gold out of this but uh, working a hard rock pocket area a little pocket vein shear zone like this is not easy but uh, it's got some good rewards and getting gold like this from a small batch of his ore it makes the whole big effort worthwhile so I want to emphasize before we finish that these kinds of pockets are not all that unusual. These kinds of little tiny veins, you know, if it was a big wide vein that had lots of gold in it, you know, it had been found most likely unless it's buried or something in the early days. But uh, little things like this, even though, like say, Alex's little vein shear zone thing that he's working is super rich, even though it's rich it's small and that kind of stuff can easily be ignored but as I talked about in the first video where I was talking about Alex's pocket and explained how Alex found it and the techniques that are used you know you might want to take those techniques out onto some year of your claims or places where you're interested in prospecting because you might find something well worth mining and you know it's work to do that sort of thing and to come up with uh, the you know the hard work and the effort to figure but Alex has got a lot of great gold out of this I mean I showed you that pan that's just one pan he's gotten a lot of gold out of this he's been working it for a couple of years and hey it'd be kind of nice to have a place that you could just go to and know reliably you're gonna get some real good gold out of it that's not a bad thing at all it's kind of like a, a deposit in the bank so to speak and so it, it's well worth trying. It's well worth doing. Now, I, you know, if you want to increase your skills and learn more about the geology of gold and how to find gold and be a better prospector, increase your skill as a prospector in finding gold, that's a good thing to do. And it's important enough that I actually wrote a book about it. And in order to tell you a little bit more about the, the book, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is... Uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, 
do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.